I greet you all in the blessed and matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As I was preparing to share the word over the last one month, several topics came and went. I had a burden to talk on other topics, but the time has not come for that. Today the one word that I received was to speak on faith. And I stand here with faith as little as a mustard seed to share it. I don't know how it's going to go around. But I believe this is what the Lord has for us this morning. Genesis 15, 6 says, Abraham believed the Lord and the Lord declared him righteous because of his faith. Other verses, other versions, I can't say other verses, other versions also mention that Instead of declaring, it will say, the Lord credited to him as righteousness. I prefer that word because it's more dynamic and it makes more sense. So, credited, in what situation it is credited? Generally, a credit is, let's say you have a bank account and somebody, I uh, gave a check, it was deposited, it. then your bank sent to my branch or wherever my account is. Of course, there's a system for that. And if there is no money in my account, obviously, it won't get transferred to your account. On the other hand, if there is sufficient money, balance, this money is transferred and it is credited to you in your favor. So, you are eligible for more than what you actually held in your account. And here the verse says, Abraham believed or had faith in the Lord and it is actually a summation of a big thing. He demonstrated this faith with his action. And because of that, it was credited to him as righteousness. So the action part is what brought about this prodigy. Likewise, if you read Romans chapter 4 and verse 4, when people work, their wages are not a gift. Workers earn what they receive, but people are declared righteous because of their faith, not because of their work. Maybe you should read the next verse also. Now that work is reward, not reckon. Okay, and that works, and to him that works not, but believes on him that justifies he justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. What it means is wages is something that you earn and for whomever you work for, he is obligated to credit that to you. Right? Whereas 
our status as a righteous person because we believed in the work on the cross by our lord jesus without you and i seeing it or experience it but we know this is the good news we knew that god died for your sin and my sin and when we believe it unconditionally and we receive it that is what is credited to us credited in our favor as righteousness so it is not earned it is been given to you as for free because of your faith in the lord because of your belief in the work on the cross amen so we have received it now let's move on to romans 4 22 24 Abraham never wavered in believing God's promise in fact his faith grew stronger and in this he brought glory to God he was absolutely convinced that God was able to do anything he promised and because of Abraham's faith God declared him to be righteous Now this wonderful truth that God declared him to be righteous wasn't just for Abraham's benefit it was for us to assuring us that God will also declare us to be righteous if we believe in God who brought Jesus our Lord back from the dead So it reinforces that it is by abraham merely believing and receiving righteousness not only he was uh, not only he received this status and credited righteousness was credited to him the work or the faith of abraham also paved way for all the subsequent generation of people to enjoy the same privilege Abraham was known as the father of faith right he is known as the father of nations as well as father of faith because he just believed this voice that came to him to leave his home to leave his people to leave his family i mean his parents and all that and go to an unknown place the destination was not told he said just move and he moved he obeyed and because he obeyed because he heard that voice listened to that voice submitted to this voice and obeyed the instruction to move it was an act of faith it was his understanding that he put into work put into action because of him it was credited to him now the point i really want to make here is is our faith in the lord jesus also credited to us as righteousness Yes the verse just we that we just read promises that it was not only for Abraham it was for us also but are we sure of that are we seeing the fruits of that just as much as we have to work out our salvation we also have to work out our and this faith got to bear fruit in hebrews 11 we have a big list of people who were hallmarks for 
faith like the hall of fame that we have in this world this is the hall of faith where all these stalwarts of faith that are in the bible are listed there and if you go through their lives each one believed in something and put that into action able to start with believed god in such manner that he was able to give a better sacrifice than his brother cain and god the verse says that god accepted abel's sacrifice and his work whereas god rejected cain's sacrifice and you know what that led to enoch believed in god and displayed an unwavered walk with the god so much so he was taken away alive by the lord one fine morning he just went missing and the bible records that the lord took him we all know about noah noah lived in a time and everything was so bad god was so frustrated with mankind he decided to destroy earth destroy a mankind but he wanted to see the human race to continue he didn't want to again go back into the creation part of just like it happened to adam and he found noah to be blameless and righteous and he and his family alone were chosen and god put him an idea and asked him to go and build an ark historians say the place where noah lived were nowhere near the sea so he doesn't have any clue of any vessel that could travel on water there is no rain noah had no experience of seeing huge water bodies or huge rain or anything to do with any calamity through water and it's so difficult for him to understand what a boat or ark is necessary for yet he was accounted to be righteous credit righteousness was credited to him because he ventured to fulfill god's plan without any doubt it is for abraham it was moving from one place to another leaving his family behind i think noah had a tough time building the ark because he doesn't have a model he doesn't have any um, familiarity with the strait and there are couple of replicas of ark being constructed and kept i think in in some of the united states as well as one i believe uh, is in, even in hong kong i, I had been into a miniature one of that but the one in states i believe is a real time model exact to the dimension that is given in the bible and if you look at that mammoth structure you will wonder how in noah's time with no crane and none of these gadgets available and none of these tools available how he would have built it this something your legard's grace okay rahab rahab's name was credited in the listed in the hall of fame for faith because she was the only woman in the entire city of jericho to believe in the living god while this information was available to every citizen in jericho all knew or heard of what moses 
uh, i mean joshua and his team were doing how several kingdoms were been destroyed and in the words of rahab it says my people are trembling with fear at the news that your god is leading this army and just for the faith or belief of this lady in the true living god who could save her god restrain the army and send spies to identify her pick her up and you know at that time the law has been given and the law for someone in her profession of being a prostitute is to be stoned to death but her faith in the lord the fear of god and the faith in god reverse the law it didn't affect her on the other hand she could find her herself appearing in the lineage of the birth of christ faith can do amazing things like this gideon gideon considered him to be the least in his house lowest in his clan a coward and unwilling to venture for the lord my personal belief is is in a big family with a lot of servants the bible says so and with so much of servants there i wonder why he is going to the threshing floor and working himself where his servants are in there i mean servants are made to work so he was such a coward that he couldn't even extract work from his own workers that is what i believe and to this man the angel of the lord appears and says mighty valiant warrior stand up and go with the strength that you have he had a lot of questions god answered every one of it and he transformed a coward into a mighty valiant warrior faith made it happen jefta jefta is technically if i say may I say so he is a bastard he doesn't know who his father is bible itself says so and this guy was rejected by his own family and rejected by his own society but at an opportune time when they could find no one to lead this lights out of the oppression they were facing from the enemy they call jafta this nobody this person who lacked an identity trusted god and did great exploits there are many in the list one good one to be the last could be david david demonstrated his faithfulness in different stages right from his youth until his last breath he did many of these mighty exploits through faith and he was somebody to be called as the person after god's own heart so what does faith in god do if those who receive this faith demonstrate the faith they have through actions sinners and cursed men and women condemned to death condemned to die as per law or having a moral lifestyle or considered unworthy they were sanctified 
they were justified and they were made worthy amen their faith in god resulted in a dedicated life devoted to fulfilling god's purpose in their life among the nine gifts of the holy spirit one gift is the gift of faith that doesn't mean that those who did not receive this gift of faith lack faith no that is not the idea behind because if you and i didn't have faith we wouldn't have been saved in the first place so this gift of faith is distributed according to the will of the holy spirit on those people who have been called or chosen for very greater purposes where great faith is required but categorically everyone has been given an element of faith a measure of faith because of which you and i could believe in the lord jesus christ and could become his son and daughter we all know about the faith of the centurion we read that in the book of gospel of luke as well as gospel of matthew in chapter 7 of luke and he displayed such amazing faith jesus marveled at it and he said will i find such faith in israel obviously it is understood the centurion was a gentile and you and i are, are gentiles made into god's children made right years by his precious blood we got to display a greater measure of faith a greater level of faith So what I want to stress upon this morning is we have to unleash our faith to work on it and bring about much fruit. We have to take steps of faith or indulge in acts of faith that not only proves that you and I are chosen children of God it also strengthens us in a time that makes life difficult like the word of God faith is also a kind of a double edged sword why I say so is at one side your faith will be tested if you are not strong in a time of persecution we will end up backsliding rejecting or in other words we will not be able to stand up for the lord so to face the test of faith we have to act we have to do many acts of faith take steps of faith we all know of the famous definition for 
faith what does it say romans 1 11:1 what is faith it is a confident assurance that we hope for is going to happen it's a confident assurance that what we hope for is going to happen it is a evidence of things we cannot yet see every day gives us opportunities to demonstrate our faith work out our faith and when i talk of faith i want all you also to think out of the box if you compartmentalize and consider certain things to be secular and certain things to be sacred then we will not be able to think out of the box like one of the preachers what he told really impacted me he said in this world everything is holy and sacred other than sin are you with me only sin is unholy only sin is secular <laughs> okay everything else that you do has something to serve the lord something to have a lifestyle in it and you and i doing it excellently well is a worship unto the lord if you are called to be a doctor or called to be a teacher or called to be a preacher or call whatever profession secular profession you are in you doing an excellent job there is a worship unto the lord because god placed you there god put you there and your work should glorify god your neighbor your peer your boss your colleague should find that your work the style you work the way you work the the result that you give is different better excellent than the rest and through your work god is glorified so what i wanted to tell you is don't restrict faith with holy matters alone because we bring about this secular sacred dichotomy we are thinking oh if i do this this is pleasing god this is not so pleasing to god no you have to show your faith exercise your faith in every area your steps of faith and acts of faith will be honored by god can you put first corinthians 13 13 up on the screen there are three things that will endure faith hope and love and the greatest of these is love also first thessalonians 13 we remember before a god and our father your work produced by faith your labor prompted by love and your endurance inspired by hope in our lord jesus paul is writing to the thessalonian church about what the people there were doing fulfilling these so it is important that we endure faith hope and love every day we will have plenty of opportunities to demonstrate faith 
one time this happened maybe some 15 years ago i had just then read a book called his banqueting table it was written by authored by bill payet and this guy was an atheist he served in the army and in one of the wars that were fought in which he took part in the front line one bullet seared to his tummy cutting open the front and lot of his intestines and all fell out so they just grabbed and put whatever they could put it in and he was taken for treatment the process lot of his intestines and a big portion of his stomach all had to be cut off sewed up and put put back consequence was he was given premature retirement and was living on army pension and what he suffered was he can eat a full meal like you and i do he could just eat a few morsels of food because he doesn't have a stomach to hold that and intestines to digest and push it out so he has to eat every one hour or so something has to be fed in to keep him full of with full of energy one day he and two of his friends went on a hunting expedition and usually there they go to deep into the forest and they don't come back for 3 4 days and among the two other friends one guy was a pastor an atheist pastor and another guy one day got over the food prepared lovingly by their wives are getting exhausted they didn't have the gadgets that we today have to preserve food and this fellow was very stingy he wouldn't share his food with others nor he is able to eat it he allowed it to rot and ate spoiled food ended up having food poison in the middle of the forest high fevers no medicine one day gone second day he is almost dying and the friends decided to abort the trip and take him back and they couldn't carry him because he couldn't sit back on the horse he was not fit he was not conscious they don't know whether he will survive they need medical help this pastor friend had tried to share the gospel with him many times but being an atheist he only ended up resistance or ridicule anyway at that time since he was unconscious pastor felt only prayer can help either to heal him or to send him to heaven so he just knelt and prayed from his heart prayed because there nothing else to do prayed and prayed cried and prayed and his tears along this man and god heard his prayers he got healed he woke up his foot poisoning and all his fever is gone anyway they decided to abort the trip this man kept kept everything to his heart he didn't uh, outrightly confess that he accepted the lord 
but just kept it to his heart they about to the trip that evening reached home and um, each one went to their respective houses and the wives were preparing a meal this man said two days i have sweated and slogged so let me go i have a bath and come so his wife prepared a wonderful dinner I was waiting this man was famished so after a bath he came so a spread of fantastic food on the table wonderful aroma inviting him and ended up finishing everything his wife wasn't there wife had cooked and she has gone out somewhere because he had gone for his bath so he said by the time she will come back when she came back she didn't have food to eat and that's when she looked at him and with a million dollar doubt asked bill who ate all this food because bill could eat only the morsel of food not the entire table of food and that is when this guy also realized how come i have eaten all the excuse me and he went to his bedroom stripped off his shirt went and stood before the mirror and he found his stomach back in its normal position god not only healed of his fevers and healed of his food poisoning god even restored his stomach and his intestines that enabled him to eat fully then he formally accepted the lord god put him blessed him with the gift of faith and gift of miracle working and that entire book contains umpteen miracles that god did through him when i read that book i was really fired up <laughs> during that week i happened to go to trichy to preside over a, a businessman fellowship meeting where somebody else was sharing i was just called it was some special occasion so they had insisted that i had to come and i was there and among the crowd there was one guy called john darmalingam he was a farmer he, at that time he was a philips dealer he was there i met him after a long time so he was inquiring about his welfare then he told about the recent operation that he uh, had a surgery because of some infection in his tummy just like bill payet big portion of his stomach has to be cut off and stitched so he could only eat a couple of spoons of curd rice at any given point of time so he had shriveled because a lot of his portion of his abdomen were removed and he looked uh, skin and bones and uh, as i was talking to him at the back of my mind the bill payer's story was only running i said if god could use bill payet and sorry god could use the pastor and heal bill payet in the middle of the forest why can't i try praying for this guy so as a president i always get an opportunity to speak so when i was called to give a president's address i didn't give that i shared this little story to the crowd and i said john darmlingam is here we are going to pray for him as a act of faith let's do something and see what the lord does we invited him to the middle of the room 
I asked everyone to get up, stretch forth their hands. We prayed over him. He said, Lord, you are a person who is not a respecter of people. You are a God who answers prayers. We pray that the same miracle that happened and restored Bill Payet also happened to Dharmalingam now. He prayed. After the meeting, this fellow who can't eat more than a couple of spoons of curd rice ended up eating one curd rice as well as a whole bowl of soup. That evening meeting itself. And God eventually restored him. Now he is able to eat may not be a normal meal, I mean normal full meal, but he could eat good enough that he doesn't have to eat every one hour. It is enough that he meets just like you and me two or three times a day is good enough for him. I don't think I am blessed with any uh, gift of working miracles. It was just an act of faith at that moment of time that challenged me to work, challenged me to minister and I want to get everyone involved so that they will also have a kind of a exposure and they will also be able to repeat such things whenever it is needed. That incident indeed stirred up the faith of many people and especially the ability to uh, minister for healing and we saw a lot of um, results thereafter. That's amazing. So God honors our acts of faith, steps of faith. What I want to insist again is don't get stuck that faith has to God to do only with spiritual matters or holy matters or something of that order. Exercise your faith in whenever any problem comes, whenever any situation comes. Just like how James is challenging us in, uh, I think the opening verse itself is like that. He says, rejoice when trouble comes your way. He will make it believe that trouble is something to be um, invited. Okay. We, we always tell, don't invite trouble. But he says, <laughs> invite trouble so that you will... James 1-2, he says, Dear brothers and sisters, whenever trouble comes your way, let it be an opportunity for joy. For when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to Like how just eating a lot of food only makes you and me flabby. But when we work it out on the gym, or need not be a gym, if you exercise regularly, you can convert many of these masses of body into uh, muscles that gives you strength and stamina. Like that, if we work out your faith, exercise your faith, take steps of acts of faith, it grows your faith and helps you endure any testing time, any testing situation. And every day we have umpteen opportunities for that. Don't lose any of them. Try to even 
volunteer if required are you with me shall we try one exercise any volunteer maybe i will pick up maybe i will ask rural to come he is having some issues with his pain in the back which is giving a pain in the neck maybe i'll ask deepu to come and do the praying part of course we all will raise we all will exercise our faith and let's see a creative miracle manifested in rural today you believe ha huh? hallelujah come come forward both of you and we all just uh, stretch our hands towards rohel father even as we act upon the word that we heard lord father as a church as a body of christ as a family lord father we uphold a brother who is suffering who is hurting lord father god your word says if anyone is sick let him come to the elders and the prayer of faith will heal the sick we receive this word lord father god and we pray father right now that you would heal ruhel lord father father your word says on the cross it is finished by your stripes we are healed lord father you have taken every pain every suffering lord father every disease on that cross you took it as a curse and you gave us the divine exchange blessings healing in lieu father and we take it lord father we receive it by faith lord jesus right now in the mighty name of jesus lord father we speak healing to this bones lord to the backbone in the name of jesus we speak your fire of god to come down lord father god and heal every every tissue every bone father god hallelujah you are the great physician lord father god let your anointing let your healing anointing flow lord jesus right through uh, father god his every uh, cell in his body lord father god and father let it bring forth the healing lord father your word promises us lord father every word that proceedeth out of your mouth will not return back void lord father as the snow comes down as the rain comes down it will not go back without watering the ground lord father god so f- forth will be your word lord it will not return back void lord father father the word that has been sent forth the word of healing would bring healing lord father god thank you lord jesus we bless you we believe it lord father your word says if if we ask anything in in your name when we believe it we have it we receive it lord father god in advance in jesus name amen I've seen many such miracles happen. Continue to uphold or call for a total deliverance from this issue. I'll also pray if there is anyone else here who is needing healing or a restoration. Father God we pray Lord that you will give us a grace to minister to everyone who are needing everyone who are sick 
everyone who need breakthroughs in life i pray the holy spirit will activate the gift of faith in every one of us here lord just as you have promised this church through many of your servants that many gentiles and heathen will be brought in ambulances here for healing and for deliverance and to be ministered lord i pray that you are equipping us to fulfill that and do that lord i pray every one of us here will never miss another opportunity that comes our way to minister healing minister blessing to give comfort and consolation lord i pray that you will touch the church in a special way help us lord to work in partnership with the holy spirit so that lord every plan in our life and every plan you have for this church will come to pass Lord we bless Ruhel and Lord we pray that you who have started a good work in him you have completed it we declare Lord that Ruhel is healed you have delivered him and Lord we pray that what he has received now Lord in his spirit Lord will percolate into his soul and into his body and Lord every cell in his body will be restored and we declare it healthy in Jesus name. Lord we also pray at this time Lord to heal every relationship issues marital relationship issues and Lord other relationship issues we pray Lord for healing. We pray for reconciliation to happen. we pray for unconditional forgiveness to flow through we pray and come against every bitterness every unforgiveness and we pray lord that all members of our church lord will humble themselves yield and will be willing to forgive one another and be a blessing we give you all the glory and honor we pray lord that our faith lord will increase in double measure help us lord to step up our acts of faith in every area that you are leading us into we give you the glory honor thanks and praise in jesus precious name amen